G'day there guys, it's Connie here again from Marquee Industries and welcome back to some more stories from Reddit. As always, if you enjoy these videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe and also the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Alrighty, let's get right into the stories. Okay folks, we're on True Off My Chest. This one was written by a throwaway account and it's titled My Little Brother Is Actually My Fiancé's Kid Yes, the title is effed up, I'm aware. My fiancé, 25 male, and myself, 24 female, have been together since we were 17 or 18 years old. Honestly, he was always kind, handsome, funny, and everyone used to say I was so lucky to have the whole package. I felt so lucky too. He always treated me with love and respect, so this makes everything just so shocking for me. I have always had a good relationship with my mum. It has always been her and I against the world. My dad died in an accident when I was little. We always joked we're the real life Rory and Lorelai from Gilmore Girls. My mum dated guys on and off and they were usually cool, but nothing really passed the early stages. Around four years ago, my mum told me she was pregnant, which was a huge surprise. My mum was around 42 years old, and although she was sort of dating someone recently, I didn't meet the guy but knew she went on dates, it still was a big shock. She never thought she could be pregnant at her age. She had me when she was super young, an oopsie, and I can tell she was stressed and worried. I decided to support her, since she's always supported me, and tried to reassure her. She then had my brother, who is now three years old. I have a close relationship with my brother. I've helped taken care of him since he was born, and I just love the little guy. My fiancé was also always helpful with my brother. We would take him out for ice cream, playground, pool time during summer, etc., but nothing was weird. He was just my then boyfriend spending time with my brother and I. Now to the how I found out. My fiancé and I lived together since we finished college. My fiancé was not at home since he was hanging out with friends, but I was home because I didn't feel like going out and just wanted to chill on my sofa. At some point during binge watching a series on Netflix, my laptop died and I was too lazy to go get my charger, so I just took my fiancé's iPad. I know the password but honestly never used it before. The iPad logged in, and I got a bunch of messages pinging. I guess he hasn't used it in a while too. Anyways, this got my attention, and I went to check it out, and of course, I found everything. My mum's number wasn't under her name, but I recognised the number and verified it with my phone. She was telling him she felt guilty, and that I should know. He said he also felt guilty, but couldn't lose me, and they effed it up. She said that it was unfair for my brother to never not know his dad, and that if he could live having his son around not behaving like a dad but a brother-in-law. I broke down. What the actual F? There weren't a lot of older messages, so just some photos stored of my brother as a newborn, my mum pregnant, and more photos of my brother growing up in an album. I couldn't anymore. I cried for what it seemed like ages, and I waited for my boyfriend to come back home. I wish I was one of those women that can pretend and get things together before confronting the cheater, but I can't. He came back later that night, around 11.30, and I just gave him the iPad with the conversation opened and saw his face completely go pale. I asked for an explanation. When? How? Why? And he didn't want to at first, but knew he had to. Apparently, a few years back while I was travelling with some friends on a girls' trip, my fiancé and mum had dinner together. This isn't strange since he's always been part of the family for so long. Sometimes mum and fiancé would eat together at our place, even if I was busy with sports or out. I did the same with his parents. Somehow, unclear how since he couldn't explain it well, one thing led to another and they ended up sleeping together. They felt guilty but apparently not guilty enough because they slept together two or three more times, using the excuse of meeting up to discuss how to tell me. Apparently when my mum got pregnant, they stopped sleeping together and decided not to tell me, since my fiancé, quote, loved me and couldn't lose me, and my mum didn't want to lose her daughter. So, here we are now, with two of the most disgusting humans. I obviously broke the engagement, told my mum to never talk to me again, and moved in with a friend. I feel bad for my brother since I really love him, but I can't be around him now. I just can't. I feel like it would remind me of all those times we talked about having kids. I would be his baby mama. Only baby mama. We talked about this future since we were 17 years old, so I want to puke every time I think how I was actually taking care of his child with someone else while still having those dreams. I want to puke. 
Wow, jumping straight in, aren't we? This is genuinely wild. Let's go to the comments. Damn, just damn. I'm so sorry you're going through this. Seems like hell on earth. You've got everyone here's support and keep doing you. You're doing great already and just keep moving forward. Wishing you the best. What the F is wrong with her mum? She starved for some kind of affection and trapped a freaking child, someone literally old enough to be her child, and kept the baby. Jail. What the actual F is wrong with people? I hope this is rage bait, because my soul's on fire for this girl. Your mother is truly the worst. She lied and kept lying to you all those years. I'd never be able to forgive her. How can someone do that to their own child? Opie replies, It's weird to come to terms with the mum I knew. She was always loving and supportive and just a great mum. And now this person, who is just a disgusting human. I don't know. My thoughts are everywhere. Oh my god, you poor thing. Betrayed by the two people you should be able to trust the most. They're both just so disgusting. I can never understand when you read about mothers or sisters doing this. Your mother is absolutely vile, lowest of the low. Your ex is just trash. You're so much better than either one of them. My heart just hurts for you. You deserve a much better mother than the one you got. Please never speak to or forgive either one of them. Cut them both dead. Yeah, a fair enough reaction from the comment section, I think. Okay, Opie gives an update, four days later. First, I want to thank everyone for the nice messages and comments. I was not expecting so much support. I'm still a mess, not gonna lie. But after reading the comments, I felt better. Like a mini therapy session. So again, thank you all. To the update. As I was afraid, I was indeed confronted near my office this week. I knew this was coming, but thought maybe I had more time. My ex was the person to come find me. Yesterday, or Wednesday, after finishing work and walking to where my car was parked, my ex was sort of lingering, waiting around. I thought about running, not gonna lie, but I guess in the moment I felt strong enough to get over with it, instead of having that hanging above my head, waiting to be approached again. He asked if we could talk, and I said yes, but I didn't feel like having that conversation over coffee like we were old friends. It felt ridiculous, so I told him to just talk right there. We were in the streets, but somehow it wasn't crowded, but also not completely lonely. Felt right. He basically said sorry a hundred times, and that I deserved better. I agreed. He said he did love me, and that he still does, but he would understand why I wouldn't want anything to do with him. He said that if I did in fact consider giving him a chance, that he would go to therapy, alone or together, or both, and that he would work hard to win my trust back. I told him it wasn't possible. There was too much damage. This sounds calm when I type it, but in the moment, things came out more with louder tone and harsher words. Anyways, he did say that he is in the, or will be, it was a bit of a blur, process of getting custody, partly from my brother, and that he in fact does want to be a dad to him. He said he does not want to be together with my mum, that it was just a stupid mistake. Sure, because four to five times mistake is just a random thing. He couldn't explain why he did it in the first place. I think he doesn't even know himself. I asked if he cheated with someone else before. He said no. I'm not sure if to believe it, but he sounded honest. I asked why he didn't come clean, and he said that after he did the deed, he always felt panicked, and it hit him that he could lose me, and he just didn't want to. I told him it was meant to be found out, that what was his plan? To have my brother go around and ignore their relationship forever? He said he didn't think far enough ahead, and that he was basically going with the idea one day at the time, like type of survival. I asked him if he felt that my mum seduced him. He said it was mutual, which made me want to puke again. I asked if he has any contact with my mum since I found out. He said yes, but mostly about my brother. Didn't elaborate more, and I didn't press for more info on that. He said he told his parents the day before, or the day before that, not sure. Monday to Tuesday, about everything. The parents were not happy, but they're glad to start building now a relationship with my brother, their grandkid. Honestly, all of this felt like a punch in my stomach. I don't know why. The parents wanted to contact me, but he told them to wait till he approached me first, hence why he was here. I said if he started or thought about custody before I found out, and he said no, but when I found out, it was like the push he needed. Great, seems I helped him get his crap together. Ugh. And this past week he was arranging all of that mess, 
That's why he hasn't tried to see me before. He sounded and looked defeated, but the whole thing made me, besides sad, angry. I was mainly depressed before, but now I'm furious. I feel like he's still in an okay place, and he isn't paying for his actions, beyond me leaving him. He will have my brother, his parents, and others, and move on with his life, whilst I lost everything. I hate him. We parted ways, not on a happy note, and I told him to never go near me again. I was done. He asked me to see my brother still, that I was important to him, and tried to guilt trip me, and it worked, but I still think I can't. I don't know much about my mum and really hope she doesn't come find me anytime soon, because I'm fuming right now and won't be able to handle it. I'll be contacting my family and friends and finally doing the blasting today. I think it's about time, and after my talk with him, I got the extra push I needed. Yeah, I think it's fair that the family knows what the mum did here. After another three days, Opie makes another update. Hi everyone, again I want to say thanks for all the support on my last update. Honestly, like I said in my previous post, it really helped me a lot emotionally. All your comments and also all the advice I got, that being about moving abroad or what to say when I do the blast. Thank you. Update. A lot has happened. I did the blasting, and this is how it went down. I first posted on my family's Facebook group we share. This is from my mum's family side. I used inspiration of what you all suggested in my last post and said something along the lines of, quote, I want to communicate to you all that my wedding with X has been permanently cancelled since I found out that my mum and my ex had in the last few years a sexual relationship which resulted in the birth of my little brother. I had no clue on any of this and I found out about it last week. I won't have moving forward a relationship with mum and ex for obvious reasons. I would appreciate your understanding and I felt it was only fair to let you know of the situation, since I value transparency and honesty above all. End quote. I also included a screenshot of my mother's message, what I said to her once I found out, and a message she managed to write back before I blocked her. I didn't open the message till before the blasting. I didn't want to hear her and be persuaded. It exploded. I had family reaching out via text and calling the whole day after the blasting. I would say most were very supportive and I could just tell they were shocked. There were a few neutral and some suspicious that it wasn't the whole story and maybe I misunderstood. My grandparents were in the maybe you misunderstood category, which wasn't surprising since my mum is super close to my grandparents and like I said before, my mum was always a good mum, so no red flags. I will be moving with a cousin that's more like a sister to me. I haven't reached out to her previously because I knew once she knows, everyone would. That's why I went to my friend's place. My cousin is devastated on my behalf and offered I live with her and her two kids until I can get my feet on the ground. I accepted and will be moving next week. I'm a bit afraid this will give my mum easier access to me, but I can't stay at my friend's place forever. I then proceeded quickly to post a similar message for my... We share most of our friends since high school and local university, friends on Instagram. I created a close friend story and tagged most of them too. This went sort of viral in our friend group. Actually, one of my friends sent me my Reddit post and asked if this was me. I confirmed. They were also shocked and speechless. They never thought my ex would even remotely do anything like this. They said, he was crazy about you. Oh well, apparently he went overboard on the crazy part. The group of friends is divided at the moment. Some are completely on my side, and some are thinking it isn't the whole truth. I told everyone that reached out that if they don't believe me, to ask their friend if he's asking for custody of my little brother. That kind of shut them up for now. My ex deleted his social media, apparently. Also, my ex's parents called me like I guessed they would. They were kind to me and were very sorry about everything. I got the feeling they were also overwhelmed and very disappointed. However, it was clear they will be supporting their son. They're very upset at my mother and don't want anything to do with her, but not sure how that will work with my little brother and everything else. They tried to give me info about the custody and what my ex is up to now, but I shut that down quickly and told them I don't want any info. I want to move on. I also asked them to not reach out in the near future, that I needed distance, especially if they'll be supporting my ex. He's living with his parents at the moment. Also, my ex and my mother after the blast were going nuts trying to reach out to me. 
They tried calling my friend, who she blocked them, and reached out from different numbers. I had to put my phone on silent and ignore everyone. However, my mother sent me a long text from another number, and that was a weird text. She said that I was being cruel, and that she didn't think she raised me that way. She said she thought we had a better relationship than me blasting out laundry like that without talking to her first, that I didn't have the whole picture. She did mention something that confused me. She said in her long-ass text that the reason she slept with my ex is because he reminded her of my dad, that it was grief, that she didn't mean to use him to heal her pain, but she wasn't strong enough. I don't even know what that means. Like, did she think that my ex looks physically like my dad, or personality, or what? I've seen photos of my dad, and well, yeah, my ex isn't super different, but also not super alike. I mean, they share brown or dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, white skin, but that's not so uncommon. I don't see what else. I don't know. That threw me for a loop and honestly makes me want to confront my mum just to know what the hell. From all the things she could say, I was not expecting that. I am holding on better. I don't cry every hour or want to murder them. But I'm still sad and upset and it just feels like this isn't my life. That it's a big joke or a bad dream. And I'll wake up to my normal life. I also need to really start planning my future and start applying for jobs in other cities. Or maybe check the possibilities abroad more seriously. I might as well for the two or three days off work to really get my thoughts together and do some research. I'm terrified to be honest. I feel frozen but I know I need to start moving. One comment says... That mum is hilarious. I thought I raised you better. I never in a million years thought you'd F my boyfriend, but here we are. My petty ass would be sending her that. Right? The irony of her blaming you for airing laundry when she did that. The laundry wouldn't be dirty if you hadn't banged my boyfriend on it. Yeah, pretty good comeback, and I think we can all agree the mum is delusional here. Let's go to another quick update. My group of friends is divided. Some of his closest friends have been saying that I should give him another chance, that no one is perfect but he loves me, that he was always good to me and I shouldn't just turn my back on him. They even said that Max, the little brother and I, could be a perfect little family and that I could make sure that my little bro has a good stepmom. Who better than his blood relative, right? This is so bullcrap. They're talking like he messed up on something minor or even medium, like he lied about getting laid off work or like he forgot to pay our bills for a month. Like WTF? I have some girlfriends that are completely on my side and supporting me, which is nice. But our friend group isn't solid anymore and everyone is taking sides. I did have a conversation with Max on the phone though. I admit I had a bit to drink that night since I was coming back from meeting some friends for dinner and I had a few glasses of wine and a cocktail. But I remember the talk. Disclaimer, this is not the exact conversation, but I'll put what I remember on the best of my abilities. I said, Do you think that you were groomed? Max said, I never thought of that, but maybe. I say, How did you even get a crush on my mum? I thought we always hung out in a group and my mum wasn't really there more than a few minutes and passing by. Was it looks? He says, Yes and no. I thought she was pretty and therefore the teen crush, but I then also tried to talk to her by passing through your house and ask if you were there. He knew I wasn't, and then had a chat with your mum. I said, was I always your second choice? He said, no, you aren't now. I say, and back then, when you asked me to be your girlfriend? Silence from Max. Tell me the truth, please. He said, I don't know. I did like you, but I still had the crush. I said, do you want to be with her now? God, no, said Max. Why did you do it, Max? Get her out of your system? So you still wanted her? Did you want her during the times we had sex? He says, no, don't. I only wanted you. I don't know. I felt like those YOLO moments. I thought I would give my teen self what he always wanted. I felt so stupid. Then why did you do it more times? I really don't know. We were silent a lot, and not long after we hung up. It was a short call, and mostly emotional. I was sort of drunkish and he seemed emotionally drained too. I feel stupid for opening up and calling him and asking those questions. I said a thousand times I don't want to know more but I was weak. Every time I feel like moving on I get hit again by everything. My brain can't understand yet. On my mum front, well not a lot has happened. She continues to try and fix it. My grandparents reached out to me but I didn't answer. I'm sure they were going to give me support so...
Okay folks, and now for the final update so far, over a month after the original post. Hi everyone, so I'm finally here with an update, and a good one at that. I'm moving to Spain. I got the job as an AU pair near one of the biggest cities in Spain. I'm so excited. I'm flying in a few days with the family. The kids are adorable too. I'll be learning Spanish too, which I always wanted to do anyway, so it feels like heaven sent. I haven't told almost anyone about it, just a few friends I trust, and of course my cousin who I live with, also my boss. My mother has been telling people I'm being mean to her when she wants to fix everything. She made a mistake and is trying to fix it, but I'm being difficult. She's just human. Not surprising. I'm now really coming to terms on how self-centered she is and has always been. I'm sad I lost the mum I thought I had. Feels like if she died. My new therapist, yes I got one the last week, yay, said I'm grieving. Max has left me a bit alone since the last call we had. I heard he's focusing on my little brother and just staying under the radar. I've had some short phone calls with my little brother, which has been bittersweet, but he's doing okay. He of course doesn't know what's really happening, but he's happy with having a new dad. It doesn't hurt as much as it did before, but it still hurts. Thank you for all the support. One commenter says, For the record, Spanish men are hot. Opie says, Heard they're also ladies men, but going with an open mind and also focusing on myself for now. I'm 100% not ready for a relationship or even a hookup, but eventually, let's see. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best scenario here. Just leave it all behind, right? Fingers crossed for an update in the future on her new life going really well. But yeah, this is such a crappy situation for OP and the kid. Like, the ex trying to downplay it as a stupid mistake doesn't realise that people's lives are involved here. Like, you don't do stuff like this and then say YOLO. God, what an idiot. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Rightio, let's move on to another story. Alrighty, back over on relationships. This one was written by a throwaway account, and it's titled... Mother-in-law deliberately infected my daughter with chickenpox. I'm livid. She doesn't think it's a big deal. I can hardly type this out because thinking about it makes me so angry. Earlier this year, my husband, 31, and I decided to spend Christmas with his family for the first time since my daughter was born last September. Since they live 12 hours away, we decided to stay for a few weeks before Christmas so they could spend loads of time with Annie. 13 months old. We arrived early like we planned and everything was great. I've had a few disagreements with my mother-in-law, Trish, 56, in the past, over my parenting style. She criticised me for using disposable diapers, buying baby food from the supermarket, and not raising any as an organic baby, but everything seemed great. After a day or two settling in, my husband and I decided to pick up a few gifts from a mall around an hour away before the last minute rush kicked in. My father-in-law, 60, tagged along. Trish said she was happy to take care of Annie. We got back a few hours later and Annie was down for a nap on a blanket I didn't recognise. Trish said one of her friends dropped by and gave it as an early Christmas gift. It looked pretty old or worn, but I figured one of her hippie friends was just recycling it. The next two weeks were fine. Aside from Trish making a point to prepare meals for Annie from scratch, I mentioned this to my husband and he said to just let her be. Annie mostly mushed the food Trish gave her with her hands and threw the bowls on the floor, as she's been doing at the moment. Trish said it would take her a while to get used to nutritious meals. I was getting sick of her meddling, but it was only for a few weeks, so for the sake of the holidays, I let it slide. The day after Christmas, Annie was really unsettled and wouldn't stop fidgeting and crying. I took her temperature and she had a fever, so I kept an eye on her for the next few days and it thankfully started to go down. This morning, she started to get a rash and blisters on her arms and legs and I freaked out. I was packing a bag to drive to see a doctor when Trish asked me where I was going. I told her Annie had a rash and I was taking her to see a doctor. She got a weird smug smile on her face and told me there was nothing to worry about. When I asked her what she was talking about, she said without even looking at any that what she had was just chicken pox. I asked her how she could possibly know that, and she casually admitted one of her friend's grandkids had chicken pox a few weeks ago, so she asked them to wipe a blanket over the child's arms, legs and face and bring it to her house. At this point, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. 
so I asked if that blanket was the gift Annie was sleeping on. She said it was. I lost my crap. To be honest, I don't really remember what I said because I was up for most of the night for two days checking on Annie. I just unleashed on Trish, asking what the F was wrong with her. My husband and father-in-law came to try and calm things down, and Trish dug in her heels and said chickenpox was the best and most natural thing for Annie to build up her immunity. I already have a vaccination schedule in place with my paediatrician, and she was booked in to get immunised for chickenpox at 18 months. We drove to see the doctor and he confirmed she had it. He said I'll have to cut Annie's nails short and might have to tape socks on her hands while she sleeps because kids so young can scratch until they bleed and that will leave scars. On the drive back, my husband started making excuses for Trish that she was only doing what she thought was best. I couldn't believe he was defending her and we fought most of the way home until I told him to stop talking to me. Annie's been scratching like crazy and I had to just tape socks over her hands. Trish tried to talk to me when we got back and I told her to get out of my sight. We were meant to stay until Wednesday but I just finished packing up our stuff so we can leave first thing in the morning. I'm so angry I can't even think. Whenever I hear Trish moving around in the kitchen my heart starts beating faster and I feel like going out there and grabbing her by the hair. I don't ever want to see her again or let my daughters see her again. What can I say to make her and my husband realise the enormity of what she's done? I don't think I can speak coherently to their faces until Annie gets better. Holy moly, yeah, I mean, I'd be pretty mad as well if this happened. I mean, yeah, chickenpox is relatively harmless for young children, but to deliberately infect an infant without the parent's knowledge is absolutely unacceptable. Also, I believe it can develop pretty dangerously for adults who haven't gotten it before, so the fact that no one knew that chickenpox was around except Trish and she was keeping it a secret the whole time is also pretty bad. Let's see the comments. Your husband better step up and act like a father and stop acting like a son. If someone did this to my child, deliberately infecting them with a the disease without discussing it with me, with the malicious intent of undermining my parenting to teach me a lesson, they'd never see my child for extended periods or unsupervised again. You only posted this 45 minutes ago, but holy crap, we need an update as soon as you've got more information. I rarely, rarely ever get mad when reading something, but this just tipped me over the edge. I hope to God your husband realises he needs to back you up. There's nothing you can say. I'd cut her privileges forever. Forever. She wouldn't be alone with my kid until that kid was late teens. And you need to lay it out for your husband. His baby is suffering because his mother is an idiot. How can she be okay with her tiny granddaughter having socks taped on her hands and a fever and potential scarring? What the F is wrong with this woman? And you need to lay it out for your husband. He supports you in this or you separate. Because your mother-in-law's idiotic beliefs put your baby in suffering and now put her at risk for shingles when she's older. And tell your daughter when she is older why she can't stay alone with grandma. Okay guys, let's go to an update. Thank you to everyone for your comments, inbox messages and advice after my original post. I read all the comments and messages and they genuinely helped, especially the home remedies on how to stop itching. Since my first post was locked and deleted, I hope it's okay to briefly summarise here. And Opie gives a quick summary of what happened. On to the update. I didn't think it would be possible, but things got worse. I got up first thing the next morning and started packing our stuff into the car. Once I opened it up, I kept the keys in my pocket since I was going in and out. Usually we use Jack's set and leave mine in my bag. While I was packing, he sat in the kitchen with Trish and my father-in-law and chatted and had coffee like nothing was wrong. Annie was mercifully still asleep, so I just gently belted her in and closed her door when Jack came out and asked if I had everything. I said we were good to go as soon as he was. He said okay and calmly took out his key set and centrally locked the car, locking Annie in. I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said we wouldn't be leaving until I apologised to Trish. I think I was stunned into silence because he then took the chance to rehash what he'd said the previous day, that Trish thought she was doing what was best, that chicken pox doesn't kill you, and that I was making a bigger deal out of this than I needed to, and making Trish feel bad. Yes, making her feel bad. 
All the comments from my last post were swirling around in my head, and I told him he needs to stop being a son and start being a father. He screwed up his face and said he would always be Trisha's son, and that was the point, that nobody should speak to his mother the way I had the day before, and I needed to apologise to clear the air. I felt like I'd entered some kind of weird twilight zone where I'd accidentally married a nine-year-old instead of an adult man, so I just asked him to open the car so we could leave. He repeatedly refused, then walked back inside and said he would see me in there when I was acting more reasonable. You can probably guess what happened next. I'd left my bag on the passenger seat, so he probably assumed my keys were in there. Nope. I waited 30 seconds, then just hopped into the car and drove away. My phone blew up with a million calls from him, Trish, and my father-in-law. Eventually, my mum and dad and my sister Jess, who I'm super close with, called as well. I'd briefly texted Jess about what was happening the day before, but she was stunned to get the full blow-by-blow. By the time I was on the open road, I asked her to phone Jack and tell him he could walk home for all I care. Once she heard my side of the story, and not Jack's, which was apparently that I'd gone crazy, frightened Trish, snatched Annie and sped away. She calmed down. Mum, Dad and Jess offered to start driving and meet me halfway so I could switch with one of them and wouldn't have to drive the full 12 hours by myself in one day. I was so grateful to see them I pretty much broke down in a truck stop parking lot while I blubbered that I loved them. They all took turns driving while I had a rest. It was super reassuring to talk it over and hear that Trish and Jack are the unreasonable ones. Once we got back I stayed at my parents overnight and they said I could stay as long as I needed. The next few days were fairly tense. I was up most of the night making sure Annie didn't scratch, which she did anyway somehow, and it seemed like she just cried and cried and cried until she was exhausted. She has five scars on her face and a few others on her arms from scratching. I know appearances shouldn't matter, but I'm so angry her skin is marked for life now over some stupid bullcrap. This whole thing is just something I never expected to happen. I answered one of Jack's calls only to have him start a rant that he, quote, didn't recognize this person I'd become, so I hung up on him. He was due to come back for the start of the work year, which I wasn't looking forward to, but I figured we could make it work as long as Trish was 12 hours away. Then at like 11pm one night, I got a very short and formal text from father-in-law via Jack's phone, saying Trish had come down with shingles and was in the emergency room that Jack was staying there to care for her, and that he would work from their house remotely once the year started back up. Jack's been there for the past few weeks tending to Mama's every whim. I'm sure she's put on an Oscar-worthy performance of having one foot in the grave, and according to Google, it should be any day now that her painful, crusty pustules go gently into that sweet night. A few weeks ago, I was honestly so tired and overwhelmed and in disbelief that I didn't know what to do. Now I'm back at home with people who actually care about me, I think I'm starting to realise how lucky I am to see the weird relationship with his mummy this early on. The fact that he cares more about Trish than his own daughter speaks volumes. When he eventually comes back, I think we'll have to have a serious talk about our future together. Now for some final comments. He locked your daughter in the car, holy crap, and assumed you wouldn't be able to get her out. I mean, that was why he locked her in, to threaten you. Holy crap. Good on you for dipping out of there after that. Whatever happens with your marriage moving forward, you seem to have your parenting priorities straight. Good luck, and I hope Annie feels better soon. Yeah, this. He locked a sick baby in the car. Kudos to OP for handling that with a cool head, because I would have lost my crap. That is freaking terrifying behaviour out of him. That poor baby is going to grow up with that as a father. You only get shingles if you've had chicken pox. The new vaccine prevents it. Rather ironic. I'd get divorce papers served before mummy dearest decides your daughter should become a breatharian or join Scientology. Yeah, I can't lie. The fact that she got shingles after all of that is pretty funny. I mean, karma has a weird way of working its way back to you, right? Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that one. Let me know down in the comments. Alrighty, let's move on to another story. Okay, we're over on Am I the A-Hole. This one was written by a now-deleted account, and it's titled Am I the A-Hole for not wanting to meet her kids? 
I'm a 36-year-old man. My parents are immigrants from Asia. I'm very close to my family and have a good job. I was madly in love with Jennifer, female 36, in high school. We ended up hanging out a lot, but it never went beyond friendship. A few months ago, I signed up for a dating app and saw Jennifer's profile. I felt like a teenager again. She looked the same. I immediately messaged her and we started chatting. She told me she got married after high school, had three kids and amicably separated from her husband. They're still very close, he lives a block away from her, and she works for him. She then met another guy, had another baby, but things didn't work out with him either. Eventually, Jennifer told me she liked me back in high school too. I took her out on a date and we ended up talking a lot. I decided to be honest with her and told her that I would like to get married and have my own kids one day. She got frustrated and said I was willing to throw away a real connection over having kids. She suggested we not talk about this for now and just enjoy each other's company. I've been extra careful not to give her the wrong idea. We've only cuddled but have not had sex. On our sixth date, she said she wanted me to meet her kids. I told her no because this is a huge step and we're not there yet. She got mad and said if I can't be a good stepdad, how on earth will I be a good dad? She said she was willing to have a baby with me. I told her I needed to think about it. My family is old-fashioned and will be furious if they find out I'm thinking of getting serious with her, not because she's white, but because of her marital situation and kids, so I can't discuss this with them. Am I the a-hole for being in love with her but not ready to see her kids or wanting to have biological kids? Whoa, is it just me or is this moving really quickly? I mean, I know we're not 100% sure on the timelines here, but it sounds like they're only a few dates in. Let's go to some comments. Not the a-hole, but six dates in and she wants you to meet her kids? That's not a good idea either. She just started talking to you a few months ago and said she's willing to have a baby with you when she already has four kids with two different dads. I get sometimes stuff just happens and life doesn't work out, but by how you've described this, I would run. Quote, if I can't be a good stepdad, how on earth will I be a good dad? And she got frustrated and said I was willing to throw away a real connection over having kids. These two enough answers for you, not the a-hole. Exactly this. She's not looking for a boyfriend, she's looking for a stepdad. Okay guys, on to an update. I decided to end it with her in person. I thought ghosting was the cowardly way. We went out for dinner and then went for a walk. I told her that I respect her as a friend, but we want different things, so let's end whatever this is. She started crying and said she would be alone forever. I told her that's not true at all. I told her she would meet a man who wants the same thing as her, and there are many guys out there. She cried more, then asked if there was someone else. I said, no, I'm not ending it because of anyone else. Then she screamed and did a 180 and said, look how many guys I talk to on my phone. You think I can't do better than you? You're so dumb. You can't even see I chose you. I want you. I drove her back to her place. I thought it was over. I woke up to a couple of nude pics she sent to my Instagram and Snapchat. She captioned, Four kids later and I still got it. Too bad you want different things. She's friends with a couple of my friends and they all say I'm the a-hole for leading her on and abandoning her. I wish we could just stay friends, but I did the coward move and blocked her from everywhere. Yeah, honestly man, I think you've done yourself a favour here. She sounds like bad news at every turn. Let's read some final comments. Not the a-hole. You ended it respectfully, but she reacted badly. She sent you nudes after the breakup, and your friends think you let her on. Blocking her was the right move. You did the right thing by ending it in person. It's not the coward way to block her everywhere. You're doing her a favour. The less contact she has with you, the faster she'll move on. I never understand other people putting in their two cents in situations like this. The only two people who really know the situation are OP and X. She was shopping for a provider. I understand we all have baggage, but she had way more than her fair share. Two baby daddies, one complete relationship F-up just wasn't enough, four kids, and working for one of your baby daddies that you live a block away from. Whew. Not the a-hole. You just dodged a very expensive and responsibility-filled bullet. You didn't lead her on. You promised nothing. You only went out on a few dates, and you didn't even get in her pants. 
Six states in and she's calling you stepdad. Just remember, the girl you liked in high school was the hot chick you made up a fantasy about in your head. You just found out that in real life, she's a walking red flag. It doesn't sound like her baby daddies are deadbeats, so she seems to be the problem. Yeah, hard to disagree with those comments, that's for sure. What do you guys think? It's interesting to think about the where are they now in regards to high school crushes and things like that, that's for sure. Anyway guys, that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories, thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.